here, feel free to subscribe with notifications on. These are my social media handles and all the links are down below in the description box. Hi, how are you today? I, uh, I'm feeling good. I feel very good today. Oh, thank you for asking. Um, and welcome to this ASMR movie review. Now, uh, last week I reviewed Deadpool 2, which came out months and months ago. And uh, today's review is no different. I'm a few reviewing Avengers Infinity War, which I watched in the movies and I also watched uh, a couple weeks ago. Because the arse oh, so, okay, so I want to, what I want to do is review movies that I've seen this week, keep it fresh in my mind. But the only uh, movie I've watched in the past week is uh, The Rum Diary, which, um, it was a good movie, I enjoyed it, but it's in, uh, I, yeah, it came out in like 2011. Um, and I would like to review classic movies also. I think it'd be cool, but um, right now, I think I'm just going to review Avengers Infinity War. So, uh, let's crack on with that. Firstly, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the movies. I remember going to go see Iron Man in 2008. I would have been like, I would have been young, like 11 or 12. And uh, when I go see it, I didn't have any expectations. Um, I thought it was awesome, just kick ass. And then the next Marvel, obviously the first Marvel film I ever watched. Um, I mean, not like, I guess Incredible Hulk. Um, well, I don't even know if that was Marvel. The one that came up with Eric Banner in like 2004. Um, then the next Marvel film I watched after Iron Man was probably probably Captain America and I honestly I didn't think Captain America was very good like I enjoyed it but at the same time it was like ah oh, you know it's a bit hammy um, you know I think I still have that opinion of the first Captain America I feel like I'm in the minority with that but hey you know well, obviously over the time um, Marvel films they've they've perfected their formula like they know what they're doing with their movies and obviously Avengers was just such an event. It was so cool. I watched it uh, in Europe uh, with my brother. And that was also the first time we had like a frozen Coke. And yeah, it was just we were, like blown away. Age of Ultron I thought was forgettable. Um, as a movie, like, I liked it. But I haven't returned to watch it. I think I watched it one since it came out, not including in the movies. I thought it was forgettable. But um, between Age of Ultron and Infinity War, the movies that Marvel put out were just consistent, you know. So uh, I really got hyped. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy was just, you know, broke the mold, I think. But anyway, Avengers Infinity War, I think they did well. Um, choosing who the plot focused on, you know. Um, obviously Ragnarok had just been a huge hit. And I know they filmed Avengers Infinity War prior to Ragnarok coming out. Um, but I'm sure they would have been able to assume that Ragnarok would be a huge hit. And so obviously they focused on Thor and they kept all the colours and things. Uh, that they made Ragnarok so uh, breathtaking. Which I thought was really interesting. Um, I thought... On a quick tangent, I thought Peter Dinklage's character, um, the, the giant dwarf uh, lad, I thought it was uh, poorly structured, so it wasn't just constructed, like, I just felt like uh, the ears acting in that, for some, some, I don't know, it was really bad. I thought it was terrible acting, or poor direction or something, I don't know. It felt like it had been thrown together, his entire character, at like the last minute. I don't know if that was the case, but it's what it felt like. Um, yeah, and I feel like I'm too bright right now. I might, I feel like, yeah, I'm just gonna take it down a notch. That's better. Anyway, I uh, in the end, all that stuff. But I thought Rocket and Thor's chemistry and their dynamic was really cool. I really enjoyed that. Obviously, uh, didn't see enough tracks, which I guess makes sense considering I have managed to stay invisible. Yeah. Watch this. I can move so slowly, you know, all that stuff. I enjoyed that. Um, and yeah, I thought 
Honestly, I thought Josh Brolin was phenomenal as Thanos. Like, Oscar-worthy performance, genuinely. I think, I think Oscar-worthy. I do think that. Anyway, um, carrying on. There's a lot of characters to discuss, and I will probably ignore some of them. You know? Um, I think, yeah, obviously, I was glad to see the relationship between Tony and Peter um, continue to grow after Homecoming. Um, I think there's a lot of foreshadowing that uh, Pepper Potts has a child. That she's pregnant, and the, the relationship between Peter and Tony is like foreshadowing to him having a child and retiring the mantle of Iron Man and passing it on or whatever, I don't know. Uh, I think, um, yeah, I think, uh, I will say I think it was a bit too long, and that, um, yeah, I think they did well in terms of keeping the locations to a minimum. Um, uh, actually, as a joke, I, I'll take that back. But I think, you know, when you think of the movie, you think of, like, sort of three main locations, like New York, Wakanda, and, um, the various planets in space. Um, big shocks as to who died, I think. Um, just because they weren't really main characters. Spoiler alert if you've not seen the movie, by the way. Um, a couple people die. A couple characters die. I think... I, I feel like... If we... It wasn't like, oh, it wasn't so hard hitting the deaths because they weren't characters we were like 100% invested in. They were secondary characters. And while I understand they both have a following, like a, an intense fan following, um, I just wasn't like, oh, they're dead, you know, it was like, oh, okay. But uh, maybe I'm just like a heartless bitch, I don't know. But anyway, carrying on, just trying to think of the plot now. I th yeah, I think. It was cool having multiple climaxes of the film, uh, or two main climaxes where the sort of two storylines uh, sort of came together. Um, obviously, uh, Thanos and was it Nowhere that they had their final showdown with Peter and uh, Peter Quill, Peter Parker, Tony, um, Mantis and a couple of other characters, and Doctor Strange, obviously. That was cool seeing how much he was involved, which I guess makes sense considering the Time Stone, which I think is gonna be like at the center of the uh, the sequel. It's gotta be. Part two, it's gotta be like Time Stone. He said to us, it's like, oh, I miss Gamora, Time Stone it back, or whatever. Because um, I know there are some leaked photos from shooting Avengers 2, Avengers Infinity War Part 2 of them um, in their like, uh, open, original Avengers outfits in New York and they're fighting Loki which is interesting so maybe they're going to go to like a parallel universe or something I don't know that's all perspective like a spectre um, theoretical uh, speculation yeah but anyway uh, but yes I, I, I haven't yeah I guess I, I felt like they also tried to cram in a bit too much humour I am not I loved the movie I'm watching it I was like a child for two and a half hours, but it was a bit long, and I feel like they could have cut some stuff out and cut out some of the humour, maybe. But at the same time, the humour is what made Marvel work so well. Um, you know, that sort of quirky banter. Uh, ever since the comic book days, you know, you, when you think of Spider Man, you think of his quips, you know. But anyway, but I think it's done very well to sort of set up uh, phase two, you know, with uh, Captain Marvel's sign at the end with the post credit scene um, with uh, Samuel L. Jackson's character, I forgot his name. Um, is it? Uh, I forgot his name. But he pages uh, Captain Marvel, which is super exciting. You know, I'm really looking forward to that movie because she's like, she's the equivalent of Superman. Like DC has Superman, Marvel has Captain Marvel. And it's just, I'm so excited because uh, she's like a literal god. You know, she's like a planet or something. Uh, from what I remember, which is super, and I'm super excited about that. Um, but the only problem is that with DC, you know, they have this problem where Superman is just too powerful. That's why they had to have him dead for the Justice League, for pretty much half the movie, and then, 
you know, he, there was all the Justice League, they're struggling against, um, you know, the villain for like the entire movie, then suddenly, oh yeah, Superman, he'll just fuck him up for like in two minutes, which sort of, you know, takes away any threat if he's that powerful. But hopefully they find some, you know, sort of quality in Captain Marvel that makes her different to that. Because, you know, you, you need actual foes, actual villains. And while Thanos, you know, he's a titan, uh, that could be a, that's a very good battle, I think. I don't know, I, I really want to structure my reviews more, but I, I tried working on something for this, but it, it just came out so bland, and I feel like if I just talk freely, like from my mind, I feel like it turns out a bit better than when I structure it. I think I can write something like a cool blog, blog post or something. But yeah, I don't know. I was I was uh, upset to like see that Hawkeye and Ant Man weren't in the movie. Um, I don't, yeah, and Doctor Strange. You know, I only watched I only watched Doctor Strange the movie like a week before I watched Avengers: Infinity War. So I mean that was still very fresh. It felt like a sequel to Doctor Strange almost. Which was cool. The Wakanda aspect of the movie was just awesome. Well, obviously, you know, I fell in love with Black Panther because it, it, it did feel fresh. Um, it also feels a bit Batman y, you know, the relationship between uh, T'Challa and uh, his sister. I forgot his sister's name. I mean, like, you know, I love his sister. She's freaking awesome. That was super cool. Um, but yeah, I think it's really cool seeing, like, they've got this technology that surpasses Stark Industries and. You know, it's it's it, it sort of it gets more sci-fi. You know, it's got it's the Guardian of the Galaxy aspect in that. And I really liked sort of the espionage feel of Black Panther. You know, the sort of spy element. I liked that. I liked that a lot. It was cool to see that, and obviously, um, it's beautiful. Like the Wakanda itself is like stunning, and or the fight on the plains and the grassy plains was such a such an awesome uh, battle scene. I loved it, um, and it was cool seeing all the major characters get together at the end, um, you know, for that sort of showdown with Thanos, and I felt like his, his henchmen were kind of just a bit too powerful, but at the same time easily defeated by um, lads up in space. Um, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the movie, stop watching now, basically. But anyway, the... Um, with uh, the, when Thor throws it through Thanos's, was it his chest or something? He's like, should have gone for the head. You know, that was the most badass line all year in any movie so far, I think. I've not seen the new Mission Impossible yet, but I assume it surpasses anything in that. Super dark now, the sun is crazy. It's gonna come out in a minute. Um, but yeah, and then obviously Vision just popping off. That was a bit, oh yeah. But obviously the only people left now are the original Avengers and a couple others. Um, so it's yeah, it's obvious what's going to happen in the sequel, I think. But I'm just so excited for it. Uh, what, have you seen the Avengers Infinity War? Let me know what you think. Let me know what we thought of it in the comments below. Um, yeah, I, I need to structure my reviews a bit more, I think. Basically, my reviews are going to be like a stream of consciousness kind of thing. I just sort of talk about what comes into my head. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna, because the thing is with ASMR, like, um, I'm, I'm worried about making a video too visually, um, like, you know, like if I was to make a video on my other channel, then I'd be like, um, just a quick one, it's still gonna be ASMR this one, hey guys, how's it going, cut. Anyway, like, and sort of get back and back and back and like, the angles would change and everything just to keep that sort of attention span going and to keep it entertaining the entire time. Whereas with ASMR, like when I watch ASMR, I'm not in it to be thrilled, you know, I just want to listen and sort of nod off a bit or relax, you know, uh, as background listening or, you know, I won't, I won't be there to be like entertained or thrilled or anything. But, um, yeah, I don't know. But I don't know if that's the same with you, you know? Like, do you watch ASMR to be entertained, or do you watch it to relax? Do you listen to it? Do you even watch anything, or do you just listen? Do you do you immerse yourself in a in a different world, or and what is 
What is your reason for watching ASMR? Because it's curious, I think everyone has a different reason for it. But anyway, I might actually make an entire video on that subject, that's a good idea. Uh, thank you for watching this video, I'll be back tomorrow. Um, bye.